Next two questions will have one minute answers. The next two questions will have one minute answers. This round we will start with Mr. Miracle. Ms. Wyatt, please ask the question. The judge executive is physically responsible for the handling of taxpayer dollars. How do you know you can handle that requirement? I have a bank account. I balance my checkbook every month. And I'd like to conduct the, the judge's office a little different, be more open with it. I not only will be responsible for it, you as the voter will know where your money's at and where it's being spent. I've attended the fiscal court meetings for the past 10, 12 years, watch them on TV. You hear the same thing every time. Pay bills and make necessary transfers. You'll know what the bills are, how much they were. You'll know what money's being transferred from where to where and why. Thank you. Ms. Jackson, same question to you. The judge executive is physically responsible for the handling of taxpayer dollars. How do you know you can handle that requirement? Well, one person, the county judge, does not have to handle that whole burden on himself or herself. You have the sheriff, you have accountants, CPAs, the jailer, the county court clerk, all these people are involved in handling that money. No one person handles all that money. So if you have really good people, if you elect really good people, and you have open disclosure and audits, then uh, the, anyone can do the job. And I'll tell you, the state, uh, the state requirements for judge executive are a two years resident in the state, one year resident of the county you're elected in, and 24 years of age. And uh, that is the state requirements. So one person does not handle all that money. No one could, I don't believe. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. <laughs> Mr. Henderson. The judge executive is physically responsible for the handling of taxpayer dollars. How do you know you can handle that requirement? Again, because of past experience. Eight years ago, I was the uh, mayor of Pineville. And unlike some things we've seen in other cities, uh, our monies were always in the black, always accounted for. Very proud to say that uh, I, I'm not one to boast. I never was even when I played sports. But uh, some of you know that. But uh, I know that I did a good job in Pineville and people are now remembering that. So I guess you have to toot your own horn. Maybe that is true. But unlike other cities, we were always in the black. I did a great job. I'm ready for you again. Thank you, sir. Mr. Brock. Yeah, I'm going to start talking a little faster. One thing that, that proves that, that I can handle your money is that I have been handling your money for the last seven and a half years. We've been audited every year, not one dime, not one penny missing, not one uh, negative audit comment as it pertains to the monies that have been in my charge. If you compare us to our neighbors, we are in better, better fiscal shape than any county that touches us with less revenue. We've been very prudent with your cold severance dollars. We've been a watchdog for your taxes. Uh, when the uh, you know, fire department issue comes up, I know that's a hot issue. If any one of these persons sitting here knew what I knew at that time, you'd done the exact same thing. So nothing, nothing to be ashamed of there. So compare us to other counties as far as transparency. One of the first actions I took when I was elected as county judge was to bring those TV cameras into the courtroom. They were not there to court. Thank you. Mr. Redmond, Ms. White, would you please ask him the question? The judge executive is physically responsible for the handling of taxpayer dollars. How do you know you can handle that requirement? I 
I've somewhat been self-employed for quite a while. I'm more of a consultant. I can add and subtract very well. And I believe there should be more transparency. I believe the public should be invited to the meetings at a time in which they can show up. And uh, I, if something is draining the pocket, being in business, if you're losing money, you stop it, you cut it off, and you do something else. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. So if it's not working, do something different. Thank you. At this point, I want to say I appreciate all the candidates thus far uh, sticking to their allotted times. I know there's some pressure here to answer a lot of information in a very short period of time, so I want to say thank you in advance. I don't get a chance to say that towards the end. Our last question in this round will come from Ms. Heron, and the first person to be asked will be Ms. Jackson. What would your supporters say about you? They would say that uh, I'm a straight talker, that they like me or they wouldn't be supporting me, and that they feel like that I'm quite capable of doing the job of county judge executive. Thank you. Julie, address it to Mr. Henderson, please. Mr. Henderson, what would your supporters say about you? Quite a bit. They pretty good. I've never heard anything bad. And uh, the only thing I can think of, I'm going to tell you a negative that they might bring up because I know it's working. They're going to talk about that hotel one of these days. It was all a done deal. Uh, Mitch McConnell's office came down. Bernie Fletcher's office came down. Hal Rogers' office came down. All the attorneys, everybody was a done deal. And, you know, you can really make things look bad as so you get put out of office and hold it up for a while and the Iraq war gets bad and the uh, economy uh, falters and all of a sudden the hotel will cost you an extra five million dollars and they said, forget it, Mr. Henderson must have messed up somewhere. He wasn't around to do anything about it for help. They got rid of it. But uh, you'll hear very good things about Mr. Henderson. Honesty is the big thing. Thank you, sir. Same question to Mr. Brock, please. What would your supporters say about you? Uh, you know, questions like that are hard to answer, but I'm going to. I think that uh, they would say that uh, if I asked a question, that I would give them an honest answer, uh, regardless of what uh, they may have wanted to hear. Uh, I think they would say that I've been transparent. I know that's came up a lot. Uh, but we have had the most transparent uh, administration that's ever been in this county period. We brought TVs in and, and I return phone calls. I've never failed to answer a question that's been asked of me by the press. Uh, so we've been very, very transparent. I think they'd say that. Um, we've not procrastinated. Uh, we've dealt with the problems that have been uh, been brought before us. We've not dodged tough issues. So I think they would say that I'm you know, willing to take on something that uh, maybe is a little uncomfortable or awkward. And I guess lastly, uh, I'm certain that they would say that I love this county and the people that are in it and will fight to the, you know, right down to the last fingernail for it. Thank you. Mr. Redmond, same question to you, please. What would your supporters say about you? They would probably say that I'm hard-headed, uh, honest, well-read, I have been described as a uh, god of guns and coal. Uh, I love my county. When uh, I announced that I was going to run, people told me that's what they figured I'd be doing. So uh, they say this fits me. So thank you. Thank you very much. And Mr. Michael, same question to you. What would your supporters say about you? I believe they would say I was dependable, honest, 
stubborn. If I think I'm right, I'll argue with you. If I know I'm right, I won't shut up. If you need me at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'll be there for you. Thank you. It is currently seven minutes within the one hour time period. And I promised everyone I would keep it to about that time. We're going to ask one more two minute question and then we will have closing statements. Once again, closing statements for one minute. I'll let my people down here make the adjustment. The next question will be two minutes. It will be the last formal question. And because we're on question number six, we will start alphabetically and go straight down the line. Ms. Wyatt. If elected or re-elected, do you plan to employ a deputy judge executive? If yes, why? And if no, why not? Mr. Brock. Sure. Yes, I'll answer that plan. Something that I think most of you don't realize here in Bell County is that the county judge's staff presently is made up of myself and one other lady. For the entire time that Kurt Hoskins was a judge, and I think we'll all agree that, that Judge Hoskins was, you know, the best judge we've ever had. And I know I'll certainly say that. He had a deputy judge from day one. We have done more in this county and advanced us further. And the more you do, the more help you have to have. When you compare my office to any office, any county judge's office that touches us, most have on minimum four or five staff and one has eight. So let me reiterate that. Presently, my staff consists of one. Yes, I would and will and do intend on rehiring my deputy judge who is serving now as clerk. Now, a lot is made of that title. I think that's where the consternation comes. It becomes a, a political issue because it's got deputy and it's why you need two, you're paid one. Well, quite frankly, that's silly when that's said, when you don't look at it in its whole. How many staff do I have? One. I will have two. If Mr. Lynch will come back and if he will not, then I will probably try to find another. Because if you're going to get services to the taxpayer in a timely fashion, you got you have to have help to do that. And we have expanded the office as it pertains to the amount of money and the budget and the programs. You now have 911 enhanced. You did not have that before. We've had more money in grants than have ever been brought into this county, period. There's, there's no way to even name it in 30 seconds, two minutes, or an hour, probably. So, yes, answer that yes. If elected, do you plan to employ a deputy judge executive? If yes, why? And if no, why not? I think the shortest graduation speech in history was by Winston Churchill when he said, uh, never, never, never give up. He said that. The answer is no. And again, my experience in a smaller government, yes, smaller, but my experience showed me that I could take care of it by myself with the people that were there. Thank you. Ms. Jackson, same question. If elected, do you plan to employ a deputy judge executive? If yes, why? And if no, why not? I don't have any plans at this time to hire a deputy judge executive. Uh, the office personnel can be expanded without paying someone $40,000 a year. Uh, to do the same job that the judge does. Uh, no offense to Mr. Lynx. Uh, I don't think I would hire a judge, de deputy judge, but I do feel like that it would not hurt to expand the office to, uh, to have an assistant to help Miss Claire because she has been invaluable to the judge executive and she's a wonderful person. And uh, I believe Miss Claire could do the job herself without even having the judge there. So she's just terrific, but it wouldn't hurt to hire her an assistant. Thank you. 
Same question, Mr. Marco, please. If elected, do you plan to employ a deputy judge executive? If yes, why? And if no, why not? No, I do not. Uh, I believe between the county judge and the five master's positions that I can give you an honest day's work and take care of the business of this county. And as uh, Ms. Jackson said, Ms. Clara is invaluable. And uh, I don't think the judge's office should run without her. Thank you. Finally, Mr. Redman, same question. If elected, do you plan to employ a deputy judge executive? If yes, why? And if no, why not? I would say no on the deputy judge executive. I would say yes in expanding help in the office. I believe people do get caught up on terms. But it is a large county, and all of us have been trying to run an election, and it's really hard to see everybody. And if it's truly just one person and a secretary, you might need a couple extra in the office. Uh, but as far as a deputy judge, no, I would not. Thank you. Ms. Dyer, thank you. Ms. Heron, thank you. At this time, before we have closing statements, I would like to take an opportunity to personally thank each of the candidates, A, for being here, B, for being very respectful to one another. I'd also like to thank you, the audience. You've been very respectful to each of the candidates when it came to the end of their time to speak. I'd like to uh, have you give yourselves a hand. Thank you so much for that. It is now time for closing statements. Um, these gentlemen and this fine lady, they are more than welcome to uh, do what they can to get your vote in this last portion. Again, it will be by alphabetical order. And we thank you for coming tonight. We will have a few more thank yous in just a moment. You have one minute, Mr. Brock. Well, first, I, I failed to thank some of my family that's here tonight, and it was because I guess I couldn't see you and I lost it. But I've got my father here and, and my aunts and, and several cousins, so I want to thank you all for coming down here and supporting me tonight. I didn't make any issues again. It's been the honor of my life to serve as your judge. I've taken it seriously. I've showed up to work every day. We've worked hard, long hours. I've spent time away from my family and have appreciated the employment more than you know. It is my job. It's what I do every day. I don't have distractions or things that take me away from that office. So having said that, I'm going to humbly ask you to let me continue that. We've got a lot of things started that I'd love to finish that did not get brought up here tonight. And I'm going to need your vote to, to help me complete that. So with that, I'll, I'll humbly ask you for your vote. And thank you all for coming out here. Mr. Hendrickson, your closing statement, sir. One minute. Uh, on, the, uh, on the rebuttal earlier, uh, I wasn't implying that drugs were going to keep businesses out of uh, the county. But they do hinder the interest that they may have, so we're going to continue to do all we can do to prevent this uh, terrible uh, scourge upon uh, Bell County. I know it's everywhere. New York City is bad. But there's things to be done. We didn't have enough time here tonight, or I can't talk fast enough, but we're going to have uh, symposiums uh, by the best experts, that can, uh, an annual symposium on drugs and drug prevention, drug abuse prevention. And the thing on uh, Dr. Clark and tourism, no, tourism is not the only thing, but if you start bringing in more people, you're going to bring in more businesses that want to be part of it. I hope you'll vote for Bruce Hendrickson as your next Bell County Judge Executive. Thanks to my family and all my friends. Good night. Thank you, sir. Ms. Jackson, your closing statements, please. I will appreciate your vote in the upcoming election. If elected, I will do my very best to bring jobs to Bell County to get a new jail with a state-of-the-art drug treatment and rehab center. There is money out there for such a project. And 
I want to thank all my supporters. And I want you to know that I have all my life done blue collar work. I have been in management some, but mostly blue collar work. And we need good paying blue collar jobs. And with good paying blue collar jobs come white collar jobs. So one hand shakes the other. And I would appreciate your vote, like I said, and thank you very much for coming tonight. Mr. Marshall, your closing statement. You have one minute, sir. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. It's been an honor and a privilege to be with you. For old country boy to get up here and talk to you and answer your questions. There's one thing that I'd like everyone to do for me. I was looking online the other day, 2010, less than 37% of the people in Bell County voted. Folks, I think it's important. It does matter, and it will make a difference. I'll ask you to re remember David Markle on May the 20th. But if you can't remember David Markle, please remember to vote. A lot of good people gave up a whole lot to give you that right. Don't let them down. Mr. Redmond, one minute on your closing statement, sir. I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. I know there's a lot of issues that really wasn't mentioned tonight. We all know you've got a lot of good people running. I would ask you to remember me on May 20th. I think we need change. I think I'm young enough. I think I have the drive to change. So I'm going to ask you for your vote. Vote for me to be your next judge Thank you. Before we go, uh, a couple little particulars. If you would like to see this particular debate again, if you missed something, a friend of yours would like to see it, again, it is channel 13. Digitally, it's 22.104, and it will air tomorrow night, Friday night at 8 p.m. and 9.20. You can check out Hometown TV 13's Facebook page. We'll have it on the Big One Facebook page and my personal page as well. I'd like to take this opportunity first and foremost to thank the folks down here at the table, Julia, Sue, and Eric. Thank you to them. Thank you to all the media that are here this evening. The um, majority of them from Bell County are here and some from Hazard. And we certainly appreciate all of them, some from Tennessee as well. God bless them. Thank you to Darren. He's been manning the board in the back. I would appreciate a hand for him. He's been taking care of the level. Thank you to the Bell Theater. And the question I ask at the end of each debate, candidates, if you could have your attention for just a moment, do each of you feel that you were treated fairly in this particular candidate forum? Okay. I appreciate everyone coming out tonight. My name is Brian O'Brien from 106.3 FM. God bless. Have a safe trip home. Before you go, the 20th of May. What is the most important thing you can do to let your voice be heard? Oh. oh God bless. Have a good night. Hi, I'm Jim Mills Jr. of Mills Furniture and Appliance out of RJ, Kentucky. As you can see, Mills Furniture and Appliance is providing you with the highest quality outdoor power equipment there is. Husqvarna. Mills Furniture and Appliance, bringing you chainsaws, weed eaters, push mowers, brush cutters, blowers, riders, and self-propelled mowers. For anything you've ever wanted, needed, or desired in the outdoor power equipment, Mills Furniture and Appliance and Husqvarna, bringing it to you. When you're looking for a place to live, what do you look for? Convenience, value, safe housing? Well, of course you do. The Housing Authority of Middlesboro offers affordable housing for you and your family. All the apartments have been updated are energy efficient. Income-based rent, fair market rent, and flat rent. Whatever your situation is, the Housing Authority of Middlesboro provides safe, clean housing that is user-friendly in a neighborhood-type setting. Randy Earl invites everyone to look at the Housing Authority of Middlesboro. Call 606-248-6500 for more information. Safe and affordable housing you can call home. The Housing Authority of Middlesboro.